Ahmed, you know, you've been fairly optimistic about the U.S. economy, have been right. How much have you adjusted, if at all, your view, given the trade escalation we've seen over the last week and a half? I still think, Sarah, that the economy is in a good place and that this trade escalation may take some of the momentum off, but it's not going to be that big. It's a bigger issue for the markets than it is for the economy. The economy is relatively closed. The market depends to a much higher extent on external revenues. So it's a much more a market issue than it is an issue for the economy. Even with a market that is dipping, I don't know, 5% off the highs in about a week or so, doesn't that filter into consumer and business confidence, if not the direct tariff effect in a closed economy? It, it may at some point, and that's the one thing that people are um, scared about, and it's the reason why I think President Trump is putting pressure on the Fed, is you're worried that bad markets becomes bad economics. I mean, that's a major concern. I think the major change going on in the market mindset right now is the journey versus destination. For quite a while, we, we, we all expected the tariff tit for tat to be part of a journey that still leads to free but fairer trade. Now, there's growing concern that these higher tariffs may be part of the destination. And that's a completely different calculus for the market. Do you believe that the president believes that the tariffs actually are a constructive force on the U.S. economy? I think what, what the president believes is that this is more than just an economic issue. This is also a national security issue. The economic dimension is relatively simple to solve. The national security dimension is much harder. There is a view out there that this is the time to, quote, contain China. If you don't do it now, when will you do it? And look, we may suffer, but China suffers a great deal more. So it's a national security angle, Carl, that comes in and complicates the economic calculus. I think, I mean, investors are rightfully confused, uh, Mohammed, because on the one hand, his tweets uh, seem to suggest that the goal is repatriation of U.S. supply chains, right? Make your products here in the States. And yet he still suggests that we could make a deal in a matter of weeks. I mean, one's a very long scenario. The other's relatively short term. So I do think you're seeing a reorientation of the supply chain. Um, companies that I speak to are all looking to reduce their reliance on China. And that is because they realize that these trade tensions aren't going away with a deal, that the deal will be a ceasefire, but fundamentally, this is an issue of global positioning, this is an issue of national security, so it's not just an economic issue. So it doesn't surprise me that companies, as a prudent step, will start to diversify more their supply chains. Mohammed, the president this morning tweeted out about China, uh, and he also called on the Fed to, quote, match the policies of China, saying that China is lowering its interest rates and, and, you know, trying to stimulate its economy. How much more difficult right now is life for Chair Jay Powell? So, so it is more difficult politically. China will boost stimulus. Um, they will go back to old measures. Their problem is that, first, these measures are not as effective as they've been in the past, and, second, they are inconsistent with where they want to be in the medium term. But they'll, they'll up they'll go to those measures to try and boost their economy. For us, it's very different. I don't think anybody doubts that a more dovish Fed is good for the markets, but the transmission mechanism to the economy has proven to be quite poor. So I think the, it puts the Fed in a really hard place, unless it believes what you said earlier, Sarah, that we are on the brink of a financial disruption that will contaminate the real economy. That's how it felt at the end of December. Um, yeah. we're, we're in a better place now, but that's the only thing that will get the Fed to move, a feeling that a market dislocation would contaminate the economy. What's your bet? I mean, do you, do you think the Fed will cut rates this year? I do not. I think that the labor market remains strong. I look for wage growth to pick up. Um, business investment seems fine. The government will be slightly um, contractionary, but nothing major. So I think this is a 25 to 3% economy, and it's hard to see the Fed cut rates in this. And, but the one, the one qualification is a self-fulfilling market accident that then forces the Fed to worry about 
financial contamination of the real economy. Finally, Mohammed, where are you looking in the markets, bond market, currencies? Where are you looking for a, a signal that might make you feel a little bit more nervous? Because overall, you seem pretty relaxed about the whole thing. So I'm relaxed about the economy. I'm, I am not relaxed about the valuation of risk assets. It bothers me, for example, that the 10-year bond hasn't really picked up in yield today. Um, and it's not because of Europe. Normally, it's because of Europe. No, this is not because of Europe. This is more a U.S. view today. So I, I, I'm less relaxed about the markets. Valuations are still quite elevated. I think investors have to focus on relative, relative value trades. They have to favor the U.S. domestically oriented names versus the rest of the world. And they've got to be a lot more tactical in this environment. It's going to be very choppy out there, Sarah.